and welcome to the Law School Playbook. Today's topic is moving from open book to closed book exams. So during COVID, most exams have been open book due to the fact that we've been remote. Once we get back in the building, which is approaching us this fall, more likely than not, most traditional law school exams will return to the closed book format. So I've had a number of requests for this topic for that reason. So hopefully today's short video will guide you to getting back to those closed book exams. So the good news is the exam prep is not wildly different, or it shouldn't be. So if you prepared adequately for your open book exams, you realized that those two still required you to do some memorization. Um, open book in law school is not truly open book because many times there is a time limitation. Um, so your ability to use materials, although they're available to you, is limited. Closed book exams obviously have a clear focus on memorization. So for closed book exams that are that are truly closed books, uh, closed book, they don't let you bring in code books, um, no notes, no outlines, and so you're really having to rely on your memory. But you have to be mindful that memorizing alone is not enough. So even though there are a lot of rules in law school, anybody can memorize a set of rules using the correct memorization techniques or varied memorization techniques, which I discuss in detail in other videos. But what I want you to focus on right now is that realizing that memorization and understanding are both necessary. So mind that gap and be sure that you realize these are two distinct skills and you need both of them, memorization and understanding to excel in law school. So timing, start early to prepare for your closed book exams. As we've talked about lots of rules, lots of memorizing, lots of material to understand. So the more you can spread this workout through the course of the semester, the better. Avoid the trap of focusing only on class preparation for the sake of class preparation, and instead view all of your preparation and all steps that you take in law school as preparing for the final exam. So make a schedule through the semester, try to stick with it. If, you know, be flexible as necessary, but be mindful of the timing because it's necessary because of the volume of information. The good news is, that your methods for memorizing for a closed book exam are methods that have worked for you in other contexts. So if you are a flashcard person and you've found that writing those out on white cards like this has worked for you in the past, you can use that technique in law school for the memorization piece. You can use a study partner or a study group and quiz each other. You can write rules, rewrite rules by hand that often helps solidify um, those rules into your long-term memory. There's a lot of science behind handwriting and memorization, so that is one technique that may work for you. Cover up your outline or your mind map, whatever you're using as your course summary, and quiz yourself, right? Grab a whiteboard or a piece of paper, write down everything you can remember on a specific topic, and then go back and check it against your outline and see how you did. There are, there are tools, technological tools, that can be used to assist in memorization, such as spaced repetition and other tools like Quizlet. Just be sure that you're engaging with these in an active and not passive way. If you just sort of click through them, um, what that does is breed familiarity, but when you really have to come up with the rule on your own to write it out, or say it aloud, that sometimes may be lacking. So make sure that you actively engage with those tools. And then finally, mnemonics help students in law school. So no one of these methods is the way to go. You find the techniques that work best for you, and you can use a combination of these. Keep in mind that understanding the material helps you to memorize. So make, refine, and use a comprehensive tool to help you with your understanding and memorization, such as an outline. 
and I have videos on outlines. If you're not familiar with those or you're seeking to refine your skills, um, you can learn more there. But basically, it's realizing that there's a whole bunch of course information and you need a place where it all lives. You're not going to be going back to your text or the videos from class. You need a place that puts all of the information for a particular course in, in one tool that you could use. So your outline can be turned into an attack outline and it also can include issue spotting tips. So this is sort of reducing your outline to a checklist. That is a tool that you can help memorize your bigger outline. It will identify gaps in your learning. So as we've talked about, if you're going to use practice exams and you should, you want to be able to find those gaps in your outline. If you're using a legacy outline, a person may have understood, for example, offer really well, you don't. And so the notes in that section don't particularly help you. So you really want to identify those gaps and make the document your own. And this will require tweaking throughout the semester as you practice. And then commercial supplements will also help you round out, you know, your understanding. Examples and explanations are filled with practice questions, for example, and help you master the black letter law. And don't forget that policy also assists in understanding. Policy is nothing more than the reason for the rule. Why do we have it in society? Why, for example, does the trespass rule exist, right? If you understand the reason for the rule, often you can reverse engineer whatever the rule statement is if your memory is failing. So memorization and understanding are both key. And the thing that really helps activate both of those things is using practice exams. So you want to plan to do them as well as plan your answer. You know, there are essays, there are multiple choice. You could do what my colleague Susan Gillis calls an outline peak. And, you know, she recommends that her students see what they can write out with a practice exam and then sort of peek back to their outline and then focus on memorizing the ones that they're needing to peek for, right? What elements are you not sure of? What sub rules are you not sure of? And then seek feedback. So this comes in a number of forms. So, you know, the rubrics themselves are feedback. Often students don't make good enough use out of them, in my opinion. These can be used to really construct a sample answer and they're very helpful. So be sure you do the back end work of using your rubrics. Your outline, again, should tell you where your deficiencies are in a given answer, so use that as feedback. Office hours, of course, are an excellent way to seek feedback, and you can exchange answers with a study partner as well. Finally, work on preparing a template so you can actually pre-write certain parts of your exam answers. Obviously, you can't do the analysis, which requires the facts, but you can write out the rules and sub rules and see how you will organize your answer. All of this aids in memorization and understanding for your final exam. Use time conditions. So calm yourself and manage your stress. So your closed book exams will often take place in an exam room which is slightly uncomfortable. Um, you won't be at home with your coffee and your snacks. And so, you know, mimic those exam conditions to the extent possible. There'll be a lot of people in the room. While there won't be talking and overt noise, small noises may capture your attention. And there certainly is a lot of tension in the exam room that tends to sort of boost your tension as well. So try and practice in an environment that is not as comfortable as your home so you can kind of get used to these conditions. And then spend the first um, few minutes just dumping out everything you memorized in a shorthand way. Again, this helps you with your memorization and hopefully helps you construct a better exam answer. And keep in mind for closed book exams that you can't pick when you take it as you may have with your open book exams. So if you're not a morning person and you don't function well without your coffee and being up for several hours, 
you may have a morning exam first thing in the morning and you know, it's not a conflict that you don't like mornings. You can't reschedule that exam. So again, it's another it's another example of when you may want to wake up early and take some practice exams so you get used to being alert and working at a time of day that's not your optimal time. So whatever your exam software is, that will be on. So be sure that you can you know, use that in the same way that um, you will for your closed book exams. So you may not have spell check, you may not have grammar check. This is in contrast to your open book exams where most faculty left it open for you to use those tools. So again, you wanna mirror the closed book exam conditions. You've got this. There's not a huge difference between the closed book exams and open book exams. They are all looking for the same thing, effective legal analysis. I will be here to support you along the way. As always, do your best and I'll be rooting for you. Thanks.